Namaste all of us. It's Timmy here from the Yoga Mayor School. Thank you for joining to this Friday yoga session where we're going to focus in more on the headstand, the Shirshasana, this beautiful and very, very important asana in the yoga tradition. So if you are ready for that, then just slowly find your nice and comfortable cross-legged folds. You can also close your eyes for a few seconds. Take a nice long deep breath in. Lift your shoulders towards your ears. And then with an exhale, roll them backwards. One more time. Breathe in, lift the shoulders. And then exhale, bring them down. With the next inhale, slowly bring your palms close to the heart center. And let's chant one nice OM all together. Inhale. Oh. And then slowly open your eyes. Place your hands behind your body and because this is the headstand class, we're going to warm up a little longer at the neck. Slowly bring your ear, right ear close to the right shoulder. And with an inhale, bring the head back to the center. Exhale, left ear to the left shoulder. And try to push this right hand, the right palm, down to the yoga mat. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, lateral flexion towards the right side for your cervical spine. Breathe in, back to the center, neutral, and exhale, lateral flexion of your cervical spine towards the left shoulder. One more round, breathe in to the center, exhale, right ear to the right shoulder. Inhale, back to the center, and exhale, last time to the left shoulder. Slowly with an inhale, bring the head back to the center and then just place the chin to the chest. We're going to do some nice circumduction with the neck towards the right side. Five rounds. Slow movement and just really observe your neck. Observe this very important part of your body. For me, this is a kind of bridge between the brain and the rest of the body. So it's neat to keep flexible, but strong enough. This is already the third. Be aware of your breath. Inhaling when your head up behind the shoulders and exhale when it comes in front on your chest. Let's do one more nice, large circumduction. And then from the center, just slowly let's move towards the left shoulder. Same rhythm, inhale behind, exhale in front. Try to harmonize and synchronize your movement with your breathing. Inhale back, exhale forward. Breathing up. Slow movement, breathe out, done, last round, inhale, and exhale, complete your run, and then just bring the head back to the neutral, with an exhale, slowly place the chin to the chest, push the shoulders downward, just depress your scapula, your shoulder blades, stay here for one, Two and three, and then inhale very slowly, gently look up and exhale. Bring your head back to the center now. Slowly raise your arms above the head, make a nice stretching, and with an exhale, the hands count the fingertips to the shoulders. Bringing the elbows together, we're going to warm up a little bit the shoulders. Inhale, let's do five, nice run. Now this is a nice circumduction for your shoulders. It's already about the third. This is very important for the headstand, mostly on the beginning. We're putting most of the weight of the body, not on the head or on the neck, but by the shoulders and the arms. And now let's switch the 
direction but same inhale and exhale long and deep very nice only two nice circumduction and the last one then inhale and with an exhale bring the elbows together keep them here for three for two and one more and now slowly with an inhale abduct your shoulders extend your arms and just try to bring it backward as much you can opening the chest bringing the shoulder blades together behind and then from here with an exhale we're going to do the garudan arms so the eagle pose arms be aware doesn't matter now is my left elbow is a lower so the left um, forearm is just floating around the right try to lift it up a little higher your elbows and if it's your uh, same side like mine then now you can feel a little nice stretching for the shoulder on the right side one more breath Try to lift higher and higher and then inhale again, open up and up here and try to switch. So this is going to be my right elbow lower than the left this time. And then just lift the elbows higher and higher and feel that now your left shoulder stretching, breathe. One, two. A little higher and then inhale we're gonna do one more time open your arms exhale now the left elbow lower and then again lift it up for three breaths try to lift your elbows at least towards your eye level two and the last time inhale now the right switch and again lift it up higher and higher for two and the last one inhale open up and now just try to catch the opposite walls in your room or if you are in the beach the opposite palm tree palm trees and just feel the nice opening in your shoulder joints one two three now flip your palms and lift the arms interlace the fingers turn the palms towards the sky try to stretch a little bit even your side and then from here slowly slowly place the hands down a little movement just to release if you have any tension and the other side now we're gonna twist the spine a little bit just a gentle spinal twist inhale and exhale feel that you're rotating the neck as well as the cervical spine bringing the chin just above the back shoulder and then inhale slowly come back to the center and now let's come into the tabletop majoriasana release the leg and just a little bit of movement for your spine arch and then flex inhale extend your spine exhale flex your spine move a little bit forward and backward just a nice movement whatever is good for your body now before we are going towards our adho mukha shonasana just stretching out a little bit the legs because we were seated in a cross-legged pose so just to track your legs lengthening the spine this is also an inverted posture so if maybe the headstand is not available in the moment then you can always do a little adho mukha shonasana with a downward dog two breath more and then from here just come towards your plank and from the plank we're gonna lower to the low plank <laughs> interlace your fingers and this is the best prepare for the shoulders if we want to do the headstand inhale move forward but see the body is not on the yoga mat try to keep it up and then exhale bring the head between the shoulders look towards your feet inhale look up exhale look back 
Breathe in, we're gonna do 10. And breathe out. Inhale, look up. Exhale, forward. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale. And exhale. Breathe in. And let's do four more. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, look forward, feel your shoulders, exhale back, engage your core muscles, two, and the last one, exhale, inhale, come forward one more time, place your knees down, and then slowly, slowly, just come into your child pose, you're going to stay in the child pose, only for two breaths. And then bring your knees close to each other. So this is already the Shashankanasana, not Balasana. And now we're gonna try to place the forehead to the knee and we're trying to lift the buttock up, keeping holding the heels. And just try to keep the head and your knees together. Lankaning. And just breathe and slowly relax. This is the Shashankanasana B. Relax now. You can stay in the child pose or stay with the rabbit pose, whatever is better for you. And inhale slowly, come back into the tabletop position. So, what is the most important thing in the headstand, like always, is the base. So the base is going to be your forearm and as I already said at the, at the beginning of the practice when headstand is still not that much familiar for us it's always good to keep the weight of the body on the shoulders, on the, fore, on the, on the arms and not on the neck. Okay, So take very good care of your neck. You have to feel free the neck. If you feel that the shoulders are coming to the neck, to the ears, that means that you're already pressing too much weight of the neck. These are very tiny little vertebrae, so they are just su supposed to carry the weight of the head is maybe five, kg, five kilogram. And if we inverted the body, that is gonna be much more. So always slowly and gradually go with this practice. So place down your forearms hmm? and feel this is supination. Try to do the pronation for the forearms. Forearms are pronated and then just check the size of your, of the distance between your two elbows is not bigger than your forearm length. So see like this. Okay, and then you're gonna interlace the fingers. So once you check your side, then always take time. So don't be in hurry. Even Rome wasn't built in a day, so you have time. Once your hand and elbows are in the nice um, way, then it's two possibilities we have. We have one possibility when we're holding the head another possibility is when we interlace the fingers and just keeping the head and the wrist together. You choose whichever gives you more uh, safety feeling. At the beginning I was practicing with the open palm and holding my head. This, I don't know if maybe it gives me some more uh, protection for the head. And then try to find the top of the head, how you can find the top of the head from the wrist. You place this part and then you're gonna, the middle finger, the longest finger is coming, it's where it is arriving, that is the place for your headstand. Hmm? Very good. So when the car bar goes, mess with your forehead and then the end of the, where your middle finger is arriving. Okay, so that is your place. 
So we have the distance, we have the hand position, and we have also the place where we have to put, then slowly extend your leg. Try to walk a little closer towards your body. Hmm? Walking towards the body, you can already feel if you have the enough strength, if you have the enough flexibility. So I'm asking you, do not kick, so don't do like this. We're gonna go slowly, slowly. So first just lift one leg up, and then place it down, other leg. And be aware of the shoulder this time. So if the shoulder, and it goes too close to your ears, that means that you're already a little tired. So maybe just go and relax a little bit in the child's pose, okay? And then you can relax. Once, so anytime you feel the elbows move too far from each other, the shoulders move too close to your ears, then just release the pose. The Shashanka, the child pose or the rabbit pose, it's the best counter pose after headstand or any inverted posture. And just stay there for a few breaths. And then you can start again. If you feel more comfortable, you can turn towards the wall side as well. So again, come back, check your sides, distance, and then walk. See, lift one leg up. And once this leg is up, you don't need to kick the other leg because you just need to move a little backward, the right leg, the leg that is up, and the other leg is just gonna come up. See, because of the weight of this leg, it's pulling up the other one. Hmm? And then exhale, go down, let's try with the other side. Inhale, raise it up, and just load the weight of the leg, but lifting up the other leg. And just stay here, feel the balance. And then slowly just place down again your feet. You can try also with the feet apart. And then slowly, without kicking, just feel that the weight of your glutes helps you to go up. And then slowly in the same way you can up, you can go back down. And again, relax a little bit in the child pose. And of course, don't talk during the headstand. <laughs> so stay here, breathe in, breathe out. And now if you are ready, we can try to do with both legs. So the both leg goes up. Again, check, your, check the distance. Interlace your fingers. And then just slowly extend the leg. Walk a little closer and by the weight of your pelvis, you're gonna lift the legs up. Once you are here, you can again just bring in the legs into the, you don't have enough room that side. We, you can go towards the side split and then from here, just let's try to move and twist your spine. So this is a very rare twist for the spine when we are on the head. It's different weight, different feeling. Inhale, come back to the center, side split, and then to the other side. Check the shoulder distance between the ears and the shoulders. If it's still good, then you stay for the pose. Inhale, come back to the center, side split. Bring the legs again together. Stay here for three breaths, one, two, and three. And then slowly again, very slowly, bring the toes, the knees, and just relax again in your child pose. Hmm? Don't forget to relax in the child pose, it's very important. You can avoid dizziness, injuries. And then again, if you are ready, then we're going to try to do the Lotus Padmasana in the headstand, okay? But again, listen to your body, observe the neck. You can always sit a little bit, feeling if your 
neck is, is nice and free or you maybe feel a little bit of pressure, a little bit of tension on the neck, then don't fold, relax and tomorrow you have another day, another good day for practicing, for trying new things. And then slowly again, check the distance, <laughs> interlace the fingers, place the top of the head and then slowly come up. Use the weight, bring the legs by the weight of your back and slowly come up. Now we're gonna bend the right or whatever leg and just try to do this heart lotus upside down, ekapada, <laughs> inverted lotus, heart lotus with one leg. And then with the next hand, let's try to touch with the toes, the yoga mat, then inhale, raise up, exhale, one more time, inhale, raise them up, and then exhale, switch, we're gonna do the other, exhale, place it down, inhale, lift it up, be aware of the shoulders and the ears, exhale, down, inhale, lift it up, and now we're going to try to do the lotus, whatever leg is more comfortable for you this time. Just do that and stay here and breathe. And now let's try to bring the lotus leg close to the body. Exhale, bring the legs to the chest. Inhale, bring them back up. Exhale, again down. Inhale, up. Last time, exhale. And inhale, slowly release. And then again, just slowly, slowly. Toes, knees, and relax in your child pose or in your Shashankanasana. We're going to stay here for five breaths. One, two, you can extend the arms in front, three, just be sure that your neck is nice and relaxed, so many important things in your neck, so keep it always safe, don't compromise, and then one more, long deep breath in. And through your mouth, you can also put the tongue out. <sighs> Breathe out. Very slowly, come into your tabletop. Again, inhale, arch your back. Exhale, slowly flex your spine. One more time. Breathe in. And then just exhale, cross your ankles behind and come. And just relax. Lay down in your nice supine pose, Shavasana. So headstand has so many benefits. You don't believe it, guys. But it, the benefit we can have only if the practice is safe and healthy with ease and grace. Don't fold if you feel that you may be tired. Then just don't do it. During the menstruation, don't practice the inverted poses. There are many other things that you can practice in. And you can read in the subscription about the headstand, why it's so good, why it's so healthy. And now just allow your body to relaxing. Observe your shoulders. You may feel that you must use the core muscles. The iliopsoas, the hip flexor muscles to lifting the legs and then the gluteus muscles to lowering the leg and vice versa. And just take one more deep breath in. And deep breath out. Slowly bring your knees close to the chest. And again move a little bit left, right on your back giving a nice massage. And then just move a little up, lock and roll, and down. One more time. You can go a little more back. Just observe the neck if you have any 
uncomfortable feeling or if you are fun. Then just slowly, slowly come and sit up. So we inverted the whole week. I wish you a very nice, relaxed weekend and hope to see you soon again. Namaste.